fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Big Bill Carson owned one of the largest ranches in Larrabee County. In response to a message, he came into town to attend a meeting in one corner of the cafe. He found that many other ranchers were there ahead of him. There's Bill Carson. Let's see what he thinks. Hey, Bill. You're just the man we want. Glad you could get here. Bill, what's going on? Looks like we cattlemen got to take action. Come on over and listen to what Nate Dixon has to say. Hi there, Carson. Howdy, boys. Bill, shake hands with Nate Dixon. He's from the next county. Dixon, this is Bill Carson. He's about the biggest rancher we got around here. Glad to know you, Carson. Dixon, eh? You a cattleman? That's right. Bill Dixon has been telling us a few things about the railroad. What about the railroad? Well, we've got to stop it. Stop it? Hawkins, you loco? They just finished building the tracks. The railroad will be a fine thing for all of us. That's the talk those schemers have been spreading, Carson. What's going to happen when thousands of people come out here on the railroad to take up land and start farms? It'll mean the end of cattle raising. Sure. How will it? How much cattle could you feed if it wasn't for the open range? Yeah, mighty little. That's it. And what'll happen to the range when all the nesters move in? Well, I haven't heard anything about the nesters moving in. Well, you're hearing about it right now. And it's downright unfair. Yeah. We came out here by prairie schooner and ox team. We fought wild beasts, privation, and hunger. Then we built homes and settled this part of the country. Now a pack of lazy, good-for-nothing sodbusters will ride out on the train, take up homesteads on the range, and our cattle will stop. How do you know all these people are coming, Dixie? Why, they've got to come. How can the railroad make money if it doesn't carry passengers? The railroad men will see to it that people move out here. Uh, uh, Go on, eh? I looked on the railroad. It's a good thing for all of us. I thought it'd save us a lot of time and money shipping cattle by train. Sure, sure, that's what we all thought. Has the land around here been open to homesteaders? No, but it's going to be. Dixon has all the facts. Land's going to be opened up all along the tracks. Well, it's curious I didn't hear about it before this. The railroad men are trying to keep a secret so there won't be any interference. Look, I'll prove what I say. You see that man sitting all by himself in the other corner? Yes, I see him. I happen to know who he is and why he's around this part of the country. Get him over here. Yeah, I'll go get him. The boys, even if Dixon is right in what he says, I don't see as much we can do about it. You can do the same as a cattleman over in my county are doing. 
same as a cattleman beyond here will do after I call on him and tell him the facts. Yeah, Joe's bringing the stranger. Good. Looks like Joe had to nudge him with the business end of a six-gun. Sit right over and join the party, mister. I'm not used to being threatened. What's this mean? He just wants straight answers to straight questions, that's all. Your name's Vinton, isn't it? It is. And I'll have you know I represent the federal government. Uh, Mr. Vinton, why are you here? None of your business. Now, hold on, Vinton. There's no call to get riled. We're just curious, that's all. I'm investigating rangeland. Does that answer your question? Just why is a man from the federal government investigating the range? It's to be opened up for homestead. Huh? Oh, well, doggone. Did you hear that, Carson? There you I are. I never boys. believed it. Now, see here, Vinton. If the range is cut up, what about our cattle? What about it? We need the open range to feed our lives, yeah. sir. You'll have to fence the land you oh, own. Yeah. Cut down your stock to what you can feed. Fence our land? Of course. Well, uh, hold it. now see here. You can't do this to us. We won't stand for yeah, it. You're doggone right we won't. How about you, Carson? You got more cattle than all the rest of us put together. Nobody better try to put my life stock off the range. That's the talk. You cattlemen all have the same idea. You think that just because you got here first, you have a right to everything. You haven't. The sooner you realize it, the better. Well, you... Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go to my hotel room. Good evening. Why, you... Let him go, let yeah. him go. Well, Bill, I guess we got it straight. I never have believed it. Have I proved my point, Carson? Yeah. Yeah, Dixon, I guess you have. We've got to do something. Well, gents, I figure that if the railroad hears from influential cattlemen all along the line of track, it might do some good. The men over in my county are writing a letter. I suggest that you do the same. What kind of a letter? Tell the railroad we don't want any of their trains coming out this way. Tell them we'll take action if they run trains in spite of our warning. Ah, oh, that wouldn't help. No. After spending all they did to lay the tracks, they won't pay any attention to a letter like that. They'll pay attention if we derail a train. Huh? You mean wreck it? Sure. Oh, huh? now, wait a minute, Dixie. We had to fight hard to get settled here. Let's fight to hold what we got. Maybe he's right. That sounds reasonable to me. How about you, Carson? Well, boys, I, I don't like to think of derailing a train. Well, neither do I, but we've got to save the range. Well, it ain't likely anyone will get hurt just derailing a train, but it'll be a good warning. We fought to win the range. I reckon we have a right to fight to hold it. Good for you, Bill. Then we're all agreed we'll write the letter. Here, here, just a moment, gentlemen. I have a letter all written. Right here with me. You can sign it, and we'll send it east on the next day. Uh, we'll show them. If they run a train in spite of our warning, we'll smash it. That'll let them know we mean business. The ranchers signed the letter and left it with Dixon to mail. Shortly after the meeting broke up, Dixon went to the hotel and rapped on the door of the man who had posed as a representative of the federal government. The man named Vinton... Come in, Dixon. Is the meeting broken up? Yeah, I waited for the cattlemen to leave for the ranchers before I came here to see him. How'd everything go? First rate, first rate. Ah, you're a better actor than I thought, Vinton. <laughs> you blame near had me believing you were a government man. Well, what about the letter? Did Carson sign it? Carson, Hawkins, and all the others. Good. Now the cattlemen be blamed for what happens. Are you sure there'll be gold on that train? Gold coin straight from the mint vent. Mm -hmm. As soon as the train is wrecked, we'll grab the cash. And then the government and the railroad can fight it out with the cattlemen. Has the letter been mailed? It goes out the stage first thing in the morning. I hope the railroad doesn't take the letter too seriously. How do you mean? It'd be a shame if the railroad people didn't send out the train. Well, you needn't lose any sleep over that. By the time that letter reaches the east, the train will be smashed to kindling and we'll be headed for other parts. With enough gold to make us rich. Good. <laughs> now that I've reported to you, <laughs> I'm going to turn in. <laughs> Got to get out early in the morning and help the cattlemen. Help them? Yeah, we're going to the valley and explode some blasting powder to destroy the railroad tracks. <laughs> The following morning, the cattlemen met not far from the Carson Ranch and brought with them picks and spades to dig holes in which blasting powder could be planted near the rails. Uh, this ground's mighty hard packed. Tough digging. Yeah, it sure is. Hey, Dixon, are you sure this blast will stop the train without killing anyone? Sure, the blast will just throw a lot of dirt over the rails. The train won't be able to get through. I don't know anything about trains. Seems to me the whole train might be tipped over. I know what I'm doing, Carson. 
You just do as I say and don't worry about it. You're not getting cold feet, are you? No. But... Well, you got to back what you said in the letter. Yeah, Dixon is right. The railroad ignores the warning. They'll have to take what comes. We're planting an awful lot of putty. Better too much and too little. Got to throw enough dirt over the tracks to stop the train. It looks to me as if we're planting enough to tear the tracks right out of the ground. Doggone, my back's most broke from digging. How about some of you other gents grabbing the speed? Hey, hold on, Joe. Maybe we can get someone to do it for us. Hey, you injured. Yeah, I saw that red skin right up. I never thought of asking him to dig for us. There's no harm in trying. Hey, engine. You call me? Yeah. You want a job doing yourself some cash money? You work for railroad? Not exactly, but we'll pay you well. Sure we will. Grab a pickaxe and bust up the ground alongside the tracks. Well, why are you bury powder near tracks? To stop the train, now get to work. Well, hold on, Dixon. You can't get any man to help by talking that way. What's your name, Indian? Me, Tonto. Tonto, eh? Well, I'm Bill Carson. Uh, me, no. Oh, you do? Ah. Uh. Well, I'll tell you the situation. We don't want a load of homesteaders coming out here to take over the range. You savvy? Me savvy. We wrote and said so. Now, if the railroad comes out in spite of our letter, we aim to stop it. We need some help. You want a job? No, me not want that kind of work. Hey, hold on. Yeah, come back here. Well, of all the... Tonto rode down the hillside and raced across the valley where he was supposed to join the Lone Ranger. The masked man rose to meet his Indian friend and listened attentively while Tonto explained what had made him late. Me see men working near railroad track. Go take a close look. Tonto told about the plans to fire blasting powder strategically close to the railroad tracks so the rails would be buried beneath tons of earth. Otto, that ties in with something I heard. Ah, what that? I went to town in disguise this morning to get some supplies. The cattlemen were talking about a letter that was going east on the stagecoach. Oh. I wonder if those men know that the train is already on the way. It will be here long before the letter reaches its destination. Uh, me not know. Furthermore, Bill Carson and the other ranchers seem to think the rangeland is going to be turned over to homesteaders. I'd like to know where they got that idea. I, uh, I'm going to find out. Uh, you say train come through plenty soon? Yes. I wish you'd follow the railroad tracks east to the uh, top of Ball Mountain. When you see the train, send me a signal. A fire at night or a column of smoke in daylight. Uh, me start now? Yes. Easy stuff. Easy stuff. I'll be on the move as soon as I saddle silver. Adios. Adios. Get him up his coat. Meanwhile, the last charges of blasting powder had been planted and fused by the cattlemen. Big Bill Carson still looked dubious. Here we are. Now, oh, you want to light those fuses, Carson? Yep. No, Dixon. I'm still not convinced we're doing the right thing. What? What do you mean? Uh, well, it's too late to back out now. Hey, hey, look at that rider heading this way. He's wearing a mask. Yeah. You're right, Huggins. He is masked. Get your guns, boys. This might be a stick-up. Dixon and half a dozen ranchers turned toward the oncoming masked rider, and each man had a hand on the handle of his gun. Hold on, hold on, steady. What do you want, stranger? I want to talk to Bill Carson. That's me. You're going to take your hands away from your gun. That's how we know who you are and what you want. Now get off that horse and unmask. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
adventure continue. As the Lone Ranger dismounted, he studied the faces of the cattlemen. He knew they were honest, hard-working men, ready to fight hard for their rights. And their faces were grim. Big Bill Carson stepped forward. You said you wanted to speak to me. Well, take that mask off, then you can talk. I wonder if any of you men would shoot me if I refused to take off this mask. Let's see your face, stranger. That's an order. I'll handle this, Dixon. Look here, mister. Why do you want to see me? You're an important cattleman, Carson. Was it your idea to wreck the train? At surprising speed, the Lone Ranger unexpectedly grabbed Bill Carson by the wrist and twisted his arm behind his back. So Carson had a turn with his back to the masked man. My arm. Yeah! My arm, you're breaking my arm! The Lone Ranger's other hand brought a six-gun into view. Carson is my shield. You can't get me without putting a bullet through him. Hey, no! Hey, Dixon, you hit all my hand! Your hand wasn't hit. My bullet struck your gun. Anyone else want to try a shot? Get me loose from this trick. Here, let's rush him. Don't try it. Stand back, all of you. Before the menace of the masked man's gun, the cattleman drew back several paces. I'm taking Carson away from here where I can talk to him alone. I'll not guarantee his safety if anyone shoots at me. Carson struggled, but the masked man's grip on his wrist was a grip of steel, and upward pressure on Carson's arm, twisted behind his back, brought excruciating pain. Carson's other arm was locked, so the big cattleman could do nothing to relieve the pressure. Let go of it. Let go of it, you hear? If you struggle any harder, I'll have to break your arm. Now back up. We're going to Naroyo about 50 yards from here. You men stay right where you are. Come on, Silver, follow along. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and his prisoner moved backward step by step, while the masked man kept his eyes and his gun leveled at the others until he reached the rim of an arroyo 50 yards away. Dense underbrush grew along the edge of the arroyo. There he stopped and questioned Carson. At that moment, the Lone Ranger saw a column of smoke begin to rise from the top of Bald Mountain. He watched it spiral skyward until he learned from Carson why the ranchers planned to derail the train. Carson finished. We got this land the hard way, and we aim to keep it. And no masked man is going to stop us. Carson, according to your story, a government agent told you the land was to be open for homesteading. That's right. That isn't true. There's no plan to let homesteaders into Larrabee County. As for Dixon, why does he come here? He has a small ranch in the next county. Why didn't he stay there and ask his own neighbors to help him? Hey, Golly, I don't know, I... I hadn't thought of that. You've been misled. We sent a letter warning the railroad people. If they run a train at their own risk. Your warning or... letter left on the stagecoach this morning. It can't reach the railroad office for several days. There's no train coming through for a week. The train's on its way right now. Look at the top of Ball Mountain. You see that smoke? Yeah. That's a signal from my friend. The train is on the far side of the mountain. Wait. If that's true, Dixon lied. Dixon did lie. You'll know it when the train appears. Now go back and tell your friends Dixon lied to you. Tell them what they... The explosion. They fired the blasting party. The track's been either ripped apart or buried, possibly both. Dixon must have given the word. Dixon wants that train wrecked. Yes, but why? I don't know. There's no reason to wreck the train if the government isn't going to open this land for homesteading. Dixon must have a reason. Steady there, Silver. Hey, what are you going to do? I'm going to stop the train. You tell the other ranchers what you've learned. We'll deal with Dixon later. How do I know you're telling the truth about the homestead? You can check that. All right. Vinton. Vinton, the man who had claimed to be a federal representative, stepped from the brushwood at the edge of the arroyo. With a heavy gun held steady, he covered both the Lone Ranger and Bill Carson. He approached, but halted several paces back. Too far for the masked man to have any hope of knocking aside his gun. The Lone Ranger waited, calculating his chances watching Vinton for a split second when the gunman might be off guard. But Vinton was sure of himself. You're both covered. And I'll shoot at the drop of a hat, so don't take any chances. You, mister, keep your hands away from your guns. You called him Vinton. Is he the one who said he represented the government? Yes. That was a lie, wasn't it, Vinton? You and Dixon must be playing for big stakes. We are. And we don't intend to let anyone get in our way. Then you're not a government man. Oh, you're learning, Carson. What's the idea hiding in the brushwood? Dixon and I thought it would be wise to have an ace in the hole. <laughs> I guess it was. Well, Vin, I don't know why you and Dixon want to wreck the train. But when the cattlemen hear this... They're all looking over here, Carson. From where they stand, it looks like I'm holding a gun on the masked man. And I'll bet every one of them is glad to see me. 
Benton, you've given Carson the proof he needed. That's too bad for Carson. Now he'll have to get what you get. I'm going to shoot you both. You don't dare shoot me in plain sight, my friends. It won't be in plain sight, Carson. The shooting will be done at the bottom of the arroyo, and the masked man will get credit for killing you. You've planned very carefully, haven't you, Benton? Yeah. And now I, you... uh, I'm curious. I wonder what you plan to do about the cattleman when the train is wrecked. You couldn't very well loot it while they all stand around watching. We didn't figure on having them around. The train is coming, like you say, it's ahead of time. But me and Dixon will handle the situation. Stand still, you. Stand still, I say. Stop edging sideways. You two stay close together so I can keep you both covered. Now get down to the bottom of that arroyo. Break, blazes. If you're going to do any shooting, you'll do it right here where all my friends can see what's going on. I can do that, Carson, if that's the way you want it. Remember, all those men think I'm a government man. <laughs> you'll be shot for resisting when I put you under arrest for plotting to wreck the train. There's just one thing you've overlooked, Vinton. You've been watching us so closely, you've forgotten my horse. Take him, Silver! <laughs> Silver had been watching his master with hands raised before a pointed gun, and the carefully trained stallion was ready. At the word, he leaped into action, charging against Vinton and knocking the schemer off balance. Come on, Bill. Seizing the opportunity, the Lone Ranger leaped forward and shot his fist to Vinton's chin. Hey, no. Ah, that's his stuff. Here's another. No. That got him. It'll hold him for a few minutes. Come on, boys. Get that master. bringing the others. They're shooting at you. Dixon's doing the shooting. No, no! Hold your fire, boys! The masked man's on our side! I'll have to do something about Dixon. Hit his arm. Talk to them, Carson. I'll try to stop that train. The Lone Ranger leaped through the brushwood and out of sight before the oncoming cattleman could open fire. The great horse, Silver, followed as the ranchers rushed to Carson's side. Oh, wait! Wait, yeah. boys! Listen to me! What? He's all right! It's Vinton and Dixon who are wrong! Now listen to me! Come on, Silver! The Lone Ranger guided Silver at top speed along the floor of the arroyo until he was well out of range of the ranchers. Then he cut sharply to one side. Come on, big fella! Up we go! That's it, Silver! Silver scrambled up the steep bank. How to meet that train. Come on, Silver! Far ahead, the masked man saw the train appear over the crest of the mountain range. It was moving very slowly as it started the downhill run toward the place where the rails had been covered with dirt. The train was gaining full speed, and the men in the cab were glad the hard pull was behind them. For more than one reason, Joe. We're toting a heavy load. I wasn't sure it'd make the hill. I sure fed the old boiler. <laughs> With the head of steam we had, we couldn't miss making the hill. I was a mite fearful of outlaws when we were running so slow. Word might have gone out about the gold we're carrying. Well, we got a clear run now. Long and straight downhill. Open the throttle and let's highball. You got to open the throttle? Hey, look out the window. Man's riding up this hill at top speed. Yeah, he seems to be waving at us. Why, he's masked. Maybe we talked too soon when we thought we were out of danger from outlaws. Open the throttle wide. Maybe we can outrun that critter. Oh, sir, oh. The Lone Ranger drew Silver to a sharp halt and turned abruptly as the train swept past. Stop the train! His shout was lost in the rumbling of the wheels and the hissing of steam. Come on, Silver! He had no choice but to turn and ride at top speed down the dangerous hill. Silver seemed to know what was expected. The gallant horse poured every ounce of his great strength into maintaining the killing pace. The masked man knew it was useless to shout. He guided Silver closer to the engine. The pounding hoofs were right beside the rumbling wheels. The Lone Ranger leaned over. One hand touched the steer rail. His fingers gripped hard. He loosened the stirrups. Then he dropped the reins and grabbed the rail with both hands. He pulled himself from the saddle. For a moment, the Lone Ranger's boots dangled just above the huge wheels. Then he swung himself up into the cab. I've got a gun in 
Junior. If this is a holdup, you're as good as dead. I tried to tell you to stop. There's danger ahead. Stop so you can rob us, eh? No, if you keep on, you'll wreck this train. The tracks are buried. We're carrying a lot of gold, mister. We were warned about an attempt to rob this train. Take my guns if you like, but slow down. I'll take your guns, all right. You firemen, look out the window. Watch the tracks. You'll see they're buried under tons of dirt. Hey, Jim, he's right. Huh? Up ahead, a lot of men are standing and waving. The tracks are buried. Your gang, mister, waiting to attack us. My gang wanted to loot this train. I'd have let you go ahead and smash up. Jim, stop the train. Hurry it up. Stand aside. Let me have that throttle. <laughs> That was a close one. You uh, may know some of those men. Uh, there's Bill Carson. I know him. And Hawkins. Hi there, Jamie. Thank you ahead of closer. How'd the tracks get buried, Carson? Well, it's a long story. We got the two crooks who aimed direct the train and steal all that's on board, including the gold. Good. We had a pack of fools for listening to a lot of lies about the railroad. We'd have been a pack of killers if you hadn't stopped. We wouldn't have stopped. If that masked man hadn't done the humding in this piece of riding I ever saw. Hey, wait a minute, mister. I want to get my horse. But I want the passengers you saved to meet you. They owe their lives to you. Hold on, will you? It's no use, Jim. He won't stick around to meet the people he helps. He doesn't accept praise or thanks for what he does. As soon as he finishes one job, he moves on to another. Well, he's sure an all-fired fine rider. He's an all-fired fine man, Jim. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Mm-hmm.